Good morning. Um, so yesterday we left it off um, and I was having a few problems with uh, a test failing um, unexpectedly. Um, well, rather failing in an unexpected place. I was actually doing tests of uh, failed ad login API calls. Um, and I, I had to poke around last night um, uh, and found out the reason why. Um, what I had was um, I had this set up here. I'm um, setting up some rows for the token check. A uh, little check that the SQL works for that. Um, and then I called um, the server without any goal um, fields at all. So I expected it to basically fail out straight away uh, because there's no no verb and so on for the goal. Um, and then in my test, I um, set up for the second part, um, which was to add in a verb at that time. Um, I wasn't set in a new, I wasn't created a new set of rows to be expected to come back from the token check select. So um, the way that the SQL mock works is as soon as you basically call mock expectations were met, it kind of resets everything. So what I didn't what I didn't sort of realize was that the new rows um, are also cleared out as well, even though I never actually used them. Um, or rather discard or never like created a new set of rows. Um, so uh, basically what I had was this. Um, do the token staff fail on the, before we do any more SQL. Um, and then try and do the token select again, expecting the same set of rows. Um, and so I would get this, uh, no rows in result set. If I put those, if I basically reset and create new rows to be expected and call and add them to the SQL select, it passes. Um, that all probably sounds a bit like gob gobbledygook, but it's, it is what it is. <laughs> um, and uh, so while I was playing with um, these tests uh, last night, I did a bit more work. Um, so we had it originally that we don't pass any um, values at all in the first part of this test of uh, failing in the ad, in the ad goal API. Um, I did then have um, the verb being set with a value and passed in, but I realized that it could be possible that someone passes an empty verb. Um, so instead of putting wibble, um, so we're just having a fully empty verb here. Um, we're passing that in, um, and what we expect back then is a verb must be supplied um, in the API. And then following on from that, um, I did some more experimentation and realized that Go is really good at sort of just, it basically gives you defaults for any sort of empty value. So your integers um, and your floats basically have a zero. Um, they don't come back with, like in some other languages, a nil or a null or a none in like a functional language, if you want to do that kind of stuff. Um, so you just have to kind of work with that. Um, you have to sort of plan for the fact that if a variable hasn't been um, initialized, um, it seems, at least I haven't done any um, full on investigation, it seems that the best way is just to deal with it and then expect it. Um, so in the next part of the testing of uh, failing, I am almost actually, I'm basically just going with the flow. Um, and I'm assuming that as long as a verb is given, um, nothing else actually needs to be given because we can default all of them. So the value, the prefix, suffix, 
um, an end date will actually be a zero um, because it's coming from an integer timestamp. Uh, so zero seconds, zero nanoseconds uh, into a Unix timestamp. Um, so I'm just setting that as what it will actually end up as. Uh, reason obviously be blank. Um, and that should actually result in a goal. So the goal actually happens. Um, so I'm doing the um, the token. Uh, yep. I should probably move that down, really. Maybe not. I don't know. Um, do the token select. Uh, we then actually do the transaction and insert the goal. Um, and we get back a goal. Uh, then we have the same again for the measurement. Empty float value, empty date, empty notes. Um, so we actually do go through and we create an empty goal. Um, and you just saw me work that out. So eventually you managed to get that working. Um, and while I was playing with that, um, I realized that I was getting this, um, this console log from Otto saying it wasn't handling um, the error condition properly. Um, and it turns out that they've, since I took the template for the Go server, um, uh, there's been an update and now it does actually handle where, when there's an error. So it used to just do um, a HTTP error and just uh, throw out basically to do auto service error. Um, but now it just does the right thing and calls this on error. On error. So I've updated the template for that and rebuilt with that. So it's working now. So uh, long story short, I fixed the fixed the tests um, last night, um, and I'll just commit that off now. Um, but so I've learned a lot from that, and now I can move on to doing a little bit more of validation. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit of red green validation because we should have a couple of things that we can check. So while most stuff is going to be just like free and easy, you can do whatever you like as a um, any kind of value in the scale. Um, and you can do prefix and suffix and put anything you like in the verb as long as there's something. Um, it's up to you. I'm not going to check that. Um, there is some testing I want to do of the dates. Um, so when you add a goal, um, I want to make sure that um, the end date um, is ahead of the date that you're adding for your first measurement, or at least it's on the same, I guess. Um, it doesn't need to be. It could be today, I suppose. You could have like a goal of doing something today. Yeah. Let's um, say more later, that's a good idea. Um, and then the date taken um, can't be in the future. Um, that doesn't make any sense. Um, this is supposed to be real measurements you've taken and you shouldn't be taking a measurement which is in the future. So um, I'll just commit that off. Uh, test at go yes. Okay, 
Now I'm going to do those little red green tests. So test date taken is the same or later than the end date. So ah, that's I didn't read my own to do there. Test the date taken is. Yeah, I was right. Test that the date taken is later than the end date because the same is correct. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we need to start setting up again. So we want it to fail. Um, let's check. So at the moment, everything's hunky dory, it's passing. We want to create up create a failure condition now. So we want to go pretty much back. To this test here. Actually, no, we want. Yeah, no, we can do that and then we can just take. I'm just trying to. Keep it as uh, quick as possible. Yeah, I'll just take all this. then I'll um, and I'll clean it out. So in this scenario, I want it to fail. So I'm going to take out all this stuff. The end date I'm going to set in a minute. Uh, I'm not going to have a goal in theory. Um, I should have the rows for the token. Um, I do not expect transaction or an insert now, there's two ways I can do the date taken here so Because we could do like you pass in an end date which is in the past um, and therefore the default date taken will be now um, and therefore should fail. Another scenario is a date taken is entered and not an end date so that should fail if the date taken is in the future. And then there's the third scenario where both an end date and a date taken are entered. Um, and the end date is before the date taken. So I've got three little tests to do here. So what I can do 
is I can take that date taken and I'll just set that as well. And then I'll just from here on. Can move that down. Don't expect a measurement. Don't expect those for that. And don't expect to commit. So I just need to create these things now. So I'm going to have an end date um, that I may or may not use. Um, and I'm going to have that set to when I use it, let's create, um, I could do like an add, huh, where's my token stuff? Oh yeah, I've got token dates somewhere, haven't I? So I could just use that. Yeah, maybe I should actually explicitly set it. And we'll do it. We'll say uh, 28 days. date taken what it say token token fab All right, we'll pass in a actually, now that has to be in the past, doesn't it? If that works, <laughs> we'll see. Okay, we'll start with end date being set in the past because that is valid. How do I do? Uh, what format?
Okay, so we're passing in the end date in the past. The date taken will default to today, which is ahead. And I therefore expect a failure. Should not be I need to make it very explicit as to what it is. First measurement date taken should not be after goals. End date. Don't know whether I should capitalize these things or not. Uh, I think there's a there's like a, a go um what would you say um there's a way that they format goals in, in a particular format where everything's lowercase and no punctuation and stuff but we'll see uh, first measurement date taken should not be after goals end date Right, so we haven't done any work for that yet. We haven't done any validation in the API. So this test will fail because I'm not going to get an error back. Not true. That's ex exactly what we expected. Cool. Okay. Let's take a copy of that string because we're going to use that. So in the add goal, we need to check our inputs. So We're going to get a date taken. Nope, we're going to get an end date. First. Let's check that first. Um, and we'll do a bit of validation on it. So we'll convert that to a proper to a proper time so time unix r dot end date zero in UTC format.
Um, so we're going to check. Well, we could just get both, I guess. Is there a compare? Um, if date taken, right, well, what I want to do is that greater than that, then I want to throw an error. But that's not going to work, I know that. So, how do we compare dates? Well, the easiest thing would have actually just to be able to leave. I could have left them as the in integers, actually. Don't actually need to take them to. That's a good point. They've got to come in as integers because the JSON parsing enforces that into the struct. I know the timestamps, or they, they're going to be treated as timestamps. So I don't need to do anything there. I just need to check the actual uh, structures. So we have r.datetaken, r.endate. First measurement date taken should not be after goals end date. Yeah. Time to see what's in there then. Oh, okay. Interesting. How's it getting through? What have we got then?
Yeah, of course. It's uh, zero, 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 zero. Okay, so that's fine. It's not today. Alright, so that's going to be a bit of a weird test then, because what I need to test is a, a date that's way in the past. Okay. Yeah, because the dates are going to be like 1970. Let's, um, yeah, is that right? Is it 1970? It should be, shouldn't it? I don't think it does anything like otherwise on the way in. I'd hope not. Yeah, 1970, 101, 101, okay. Yeah, so that's what I expected, that's fine. Um, just need to do duff tests here, so I just need to do... Um, Unix... Minus forty two um, and we'll do a two seconds ahead. So we're only talking seconds. Which isn't enough because I'm going to be expecting dates. I should probably give a little bit of a wiggle room, although actually you to see dates maybe with time. 
Um, but as long as it's the right date, I probably don't care. So, what we can do then, start them both off at zero. And then, When I actually use them, I'll do add date and then, I don't know, um, we'll just do a few days. I'll do 42 days. Seems like a good number. Okay, so initially we have an end date which is 42 days before the Unix apocalypse. Yeah, so that should fail. Great, that's good. First measurement date taken should not be after goals end date. Yay, okay. That passed, that's good. Now we need to do the same. Let's quickly stick in something here. In date before Unix Epoch and date taken defaults to Unix Epoch. So, end date defaults to Unix epoch and date taken Oops. after. So now we're going to switch things around. So now we're supplying a date taken, but not, it's kind of any date taken really, because as long as you don't have an end date, it's going to be a zero. Huh. 
should have left the login. Okay. Sometimes. Right. Why is the day taken? in the past. Oh, because did I just copy? Oh. Copy paste ever. Okay, that's better. Right, so the last test is actually to supply both. Um, <clears throat> so we'll take that again. So end date supplied and is earlier than supplied date taken. Okay, so next test is purely for the date taken being in the future. So I'll just override.
uh, where are we? Here, so. Date taken is going to be. Time now UTC. That's my gauge to open them. Um, add date forty two. So this will not fail just yet because we haven't done a validation in the API for this. Um, so, but we're looking for first measurement date taken should not, right, well actually any measurement date taken should not be in future first management data yeah Date taken is definitely in the future by 42 days. Token should be okay. We're passing in the date taken, end date. Ha, huh. well that'll fail. I need to supply an end date as well, um, which Oh, I could just make that something bigger than that. Say so 60 there. That's just so that we have a good end date. So we are testing date taken. It should go bang. Yeah. Because we're not doing that test yet. That's red. Now we need to do basically that. If our data taken is greater than Time dot now new TC actually what we want. What'd you do that for? Thank you. Uh, what we want is to set an actual date, don't we? I'll stop doing that. That's annoying. Oh, 
do the old uh, date setup stuff. So. That's basically what we want. So date now is date from year, month, day of now in UTC format. In Unix. Yeah, so get today's year, month, day, construct a clean date based off of that, and then get its Unix timestamp and compare that with the entered date taken. Yeah, this is all. Yeah, I may have to revisit this to clean up the date taken and the end date that are input to make sure they're just the year, month, day. because otherwise we're comparing seconds and stuff and I don't really want to do that. I only really care about the date rather than the seconds. But yeah, okay. Measurement date taken should not be in the future. Okay. Boss. Right. I'm going to get to the rest today, so. Uh, Do um, only year, month, day are oh, significant. Yeah, because I don't think we want to do inter interday measurements and stuff. It just seems a little bit too granular. But yeah. 
Okay. Commit that off for the moment. Taken. I only got that because I cleaned out all my nine hosts. Right. Yeah. Right. We are good. So I think that's enough for today. Um, probably we'll just finish off that quick test next time and then see how that actually reflects on the front end because uh, it's been a while since I did any spell and stuff so probably need to flip back make sure that um, those those new validations for the verb and the dates are actually going to be handled on the front end we'll see right uh, uh, until next time take care bye